okay welcome back to my channel in this video we are going to be looking at the formation of coral reefs a coral reef is a limestone ridge created along the coast which helps to protect the coast and it also influences how other landforms are created along the coast on these landforms, beautiful marine ecosystems develop. And these ecosystems, therefore, forms the habitat of a variety of marine creatures. The Coral reef is therefore important to the fishing industry and is also a major tourist attraction. Coral reefs develop under specific conditions and are therefore not evenly distributed across the globe. They develop in tropical waters where the temperatures are between 21 and 30 degrees Celsius. And therefore, coral reefs are found throughout the Caribbean region. Coral reefs also develop in shallow water. They develop where the water is no more than about 45 meters deep. And this is in order that sunlight will be able to penetrate. For sunlight to penetrate the water, the water also needs to be clear. Coral, coral reefs will not thrive where the water is turbid. Another requirement for the existence of coral reef is clean oxygenated water. Pollutions will affect the coral. So for example, organic pollution such as sewage provides the growth or promotes the growth of other organisms which reduce oxygen available for coral. Coral also develops only where there is salt water. The corals need salt water to survive and require a certain balance in the ratio of salt and water. We will therefore not find corals at the mouth of rivers where the water is fresh. Now, coral reefs are built by corals, and the corals are colonies of coral. Polyps. In other words, coral polyps, which are some tiny marine organisms, live together in a group called a colony or a coral. And the coral, as a community, builds the reef. Now, not all corals build reefs. Corals can be broadly divided into hard coral or stony coral and soft corals. It is, the, it is the stony corals or the hard corals that actually build the coral reefs. Now the coral polyp, which are the tiny organisms that form or build the reef are made up of tentacles which they use during the night because they are they are nocturnal animals they capture food 
using these tentacles. They ingest the food with their mouth and then they digest the food in their gut. But this food that is captured in this way is just a small portion of what the coral polyp needs for its survival and its activities. Most of the food that it gets, it gets from some algae called zoanthellae that lives in its skin. The two organisms form a symbiotic relationship. So the polyps get food from the algae they get oxygen from the algae and they also get their color from the algae because the, the polyp is basically clear or transparent. The algae in turn gets food from the waste of the polyp as well as they are provided with a shelter. Now, the polyp itself finds shelter and protection in a coral skeleton that they create from calcium carbonate. Now, a reef begins when a coral larvae attaches itself to a solid substrate, such as a hard seabed, a rock, or an old coral reef. The polyps build up the reef by pushing themselves up and out of their skeletons, creating spaces below them. And then they fill these spaces by depositing calcium carbonate that was previously extracted from the seawater. Three different types of reefs may be built up by the corals. These are fringing reef, barrier reef, and otter reef. The fringing reef is attached to the coast and has a narrow and shallow lagoon separating it from the coast. The barrier reef is separated from the coast by a deep and wide lagoon. The atoll reef is an isolated ring-shaped reef rising out of deep water and having a lagoon at its center. So this is a diagram of the fringing reef and notice that it is attached to the coast and that the lagoon that it forms is both shallow and narrow. Unlike the fringing reef, the barrier reef is wider and deeper. Now, if we go back to the fringing reef, we have fringing reefs throughout the Caribbean, and one example 
of a fringing reef is uh, the fringing reef that uh, lines the north coast of Jamaica. A good example of a barrier reef is the Belize Barrier Reef. And this is the second largest barrier reef in the world next to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Here we have the Atoll Reef. Notice we have some tiny reef islands surrounding a lagoon. An example of atoll reefs in the Caribbean uh, are the Turniff Islands, the Lighthouse Reef, and the Glovers Reef that are just outside of the Belize Barrier Reef. Now, certain theories have been put forward to explain how these reefs, these different types of reefs, sorry, develops. Charles Darwin was one of the first persons to put forward a theory explaining the development of reefs, of the reefs. According to Darwin, the different types of coral reefs developed at different stages as the land subsided as a result of tectonic movement. So according to Darwin, all other coral reefs began their development as a fringing reef. But when the land started to subside, the reef had to grow in order to keep pace with the land being subsided. Growth was more encouraged at the outer edge or the seaward edge where more food was available, but because less food was found on the inner part of the reef, the inner reef subsided with the land. As the outer part of the reef grew, the lagoon between the land and the reef widened and as a result of this a barrier reef was created when the island was completely submerged beneath the sea an atoll reef was formed with a lagoon at its center Now, Darwin's theory has gives a lot of insights, but it also has certain limitations. And so other theories have been developed. One theory is a glacial control theory proposed by Reginald Daly. Now, according to Dali, the different reefs developed during the Ice Age where temperatures dropped and as a result of that, a lot of the water became stored up as ice, so less water entered the sea and so the sea level dropped. When this happened, the pre-existing reefs were exposed at the surface. 
they were then they then experienced erosion and so their top developed a platform shape over time as the level of the sea continued to drop and with the coral reef not being able to provide protection, the coast experienced erosion and wave pod platforms also developed along the coast. In some cases, the peak of the islands were also leveled off by erosion. Now, according to Dali, after a while, the temperatures returned to normal and the ice started melting again. And as a result of that, the sea level began rising once more. Under these conditions, coral polyps were able to recolonize the coastal area. The specific location that was recolonized by the coral polyps was what determined the type of coral reef that developed. So where the polyps colonized uh, the narrow wave cut platforms along the coast, fringing reefs developed. Where the polyps colonized uh, the broad platforms away from the coast, barrier reefs developed. And in the case where the polyps colonized the flattened top of the islands, atolls were developed. Of course, Dali's theory also gives a lot of insights but also has its own limitation. I encourage you to do your own research on these two theories and examine their advantages and the insights that they bring as well as their limitations. So in conclusion, we can say that corals do more than just provide beauty. They are habitats for marine creatures. They are tourist attractions. They are fishing grounds. They help to protect the coastline. But at the same time, because coral reefs are created by coral polyps, and coral polyps are sensitive to environmental changes, it is very important that we protect our coral reefs in order for them to continue to protect us. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, to share, and to subscribe.